welcome to botany class today's learning objective is cyanobacteria before learning cyanobacteria let's see what are archaebacteria archaebacteria or primitive prokaryotic organisms which adapted to thrive in extreme environmental conditions so this archaebacteria adapted to thrive in extreme environmental conditions like high salinity high temperature or low ph so it can tolerate that is archaebacteria and this archaebacteria cell wall which contains lipids like glycerol and isopropyl ethers glycerol and isopropyl ethers are present in the cell wall due to the presence of this lipid like glycerol and isopropyl ethers the cell wall is resistant to antibiotics and lytic agents if any lytic agents are attack this it can tolerate because of the presence of this glycerol and isopropyl ethers so it can resist the cell wall resist the antibiotics as well as the lytic agents what are the examples of archaebacteria methanobacterium halobacterium and thermoplasma so these archaebacteria are adapted to thrive in extreme environmental conditions so it it can be tolerate in high salinity high temperature or low ph example methanobacterium halobacterium and thermo plasma now let's move to cyanobacteria what are cyanobacteria cyanobacteria are commonly called as blue green algae or cyanophyce cyanophyce cyanobacteria how old are cyanobacteria how old are cyanobacteria cyanobacteria there are there is a deposition of the colonies of the cyanobacterian members cyanobacterian members when you are looking the thallus it can be filamentous or it is a colonized form or it is a thallus like organization different forms so this colonies of cyanobacteria deposits it binds with calcium carbonate and its deposition is known as stromatolites stromatolites now how old are cyanobacteria due to the deposition of the stromatolites how stromatolites are formed this cyanobacteria bacteria colonies of cyanobacteria which binds with calcium carbonate and deposited and forms stromatolites so geologically it's uh, geological time it said that 2.7 billion years ago so this cyanobacter what are the salient features of cyanobacteria this cyanobacteria or blue green alga or it is commonly called as cyanophyce member cyanophyce so this cyanophyce lives in fresh water and marine water. most of the species are fresh water and marine water species are present what are the marine species trichodesmium and dermocarpa there are so many species but you are going to learn only two marine species of cyanobacteria are trichodesmium and dermocarpa and in the red sea the color of the red in the red sea because of the presence of trichodesmium erythrobium erythrium trichodesmium erythrium due to the presence of this the red color forms in red sea and this all cyanobacterian members which adapted in the form of endophytic and phycobionts what is endophytic and what is phycobiont endophytic endophytic which lives between the living plants the phytic phytic it lives in the plants living between the plants for example there are nastoc anabina oscillatoria this type of organism cyanobacteria the blue green alga these are lives in other plants living plants like coralloid roots of cycas this nastoc and anabina which lives in the coralloid root of cycas 
and there is a species azola azola is a water fern so it also makes symbiotic association and this all fixes nitrogen so they are examples of endophytic species nasta canabina oscillatoria they are in this endophytic species and what is meant by phycobionts phycobionts have the association of lichen what is lichen there is association of algae and fungi is lichen so algal potter phycobionts phycobionts are the algal potter here the al lichen is the association of algae and fungi the so, algae it photosynthetically it synthesizes its food and supply to fungi fungus which collects water and give both are mutually benefited so here the algal partner is phycobion is gliocapsa cytonema examples of phycobion seen cyanophycian members are gliocapsa and cytonema now let's see what are the salient features of cyanobacteria there are particular salient features what are they these organisms are evolutionary records it says that it's a primitive prokaryotic photosynthetic organism because of the presence of pigments it synthesizes its own food so it is a prokaryotic organism and it forms in different thallus organization unicellular unicellular uh, colony as well as it is filamentous let's see few examples unicellular organisms in cyanobacteria is crococcus this is the picture of crococcus unicellular unicellular cyanobacteria is or cyanophyce or blue green alga is crococcus then colonial forms this is the example of colonial forms gliocapsa this is gliocapsa colonies it's present as a colony and filamentous nastoc this is the filamentous alga blue green alga nastoc nastoc is filamentous and when you look into this uh, cyto protoplasm the cytoplasm which is differentiated into two regions the central part is called as centroplasm and the chromatoplasm so chromatophores so two regions the protoplasm divides and certain species of oscillatoria oscillatoria it shows gliding movement gliding movement is very important in cyanophycian members cyanobacteria it shows gliding movement one word question oscillatoria is one of the example of gliding movement and there are many pigments pigments are very very important characteristic feature of alga so this is coming under blue green alga the pigments what are the pigments present in this phycocyanin phycoerythrin and mixoxanthin phycocyanin phycocyanin is present because it is phycos this is a cyanophycian members phycocyanin pigment and phycoerythrin because red alga is also present there because due to the presence of this this red color due to trichodesmium trichodesmium erythrium so it contains phycoerythrin and mixoxanthin mixoxanthophyll these all pigments are present in this cyanobacteria now reproduction reproduction only vegetative method sexual method of reproduction is absent in cyanobacteria so common vegetative method of reproduction is akinase akinase hormogonia formation fission and endosperm formation akinase are the thick walls it forms as a vegetative cell around this there is a thick wall so akinase formation hormogonia hormogonia here in this hormogonia filamentous alga filamentous alga which produces a cell division so it forms a hormogonia and fission of fission or endosperm formation endospore formation it forms endospore 
and when the conditions are favor it develops into a new species so reproduction only vegetative method by means of echinus harmagonia fission and endospores and most of the species of this is used as biofertilizers and here it produces certain filamentous alga in the terminal region or in the intercalary region it produces a structure called heterocyst so this heterocyst which fixes nitrogen heterocyst are used for nitrogen fixation and there is a mucilage substance outside the thallus due to the presence of this mucilaginous substance it's also called as myxophysi so it's it's called myxophysi actually it is cyanophysi cyanophysi due to the presence of mucilaginous substances it's again known as myxophysi and most of the cyanobacteria which forms water bloom what is this water bloom this abundance of due to the abundance of this species it causes toxic substances which cannot allow the proper sunlight and aeration towards the water and due to this it produces a toxic substance oxygen depletion causes so toxic substances are released what are the examples of water bloom species microcystis and anabina the name of the species is microcystis arginosa microcystis arginosa and anabina flasacque anabina flasacque they are very important for causing water bloom they are producing toxic substance and causes water bloom so saline feature of cyanobacteria is very important five mark question so first write about the thallus organization and write about the gliding moment then what are the pigments present and the reserve food material is cyanophysian starch reserve food material then how reproduction taking place then why it is called myxophysi and what are the examples of water bloom now two more species let's see mycoplasma what is meant by mycoplasma this is the structure of mycoplasma this mycoplasma varies from it's a microorganism which varies from 0.1 to 0.5 micrometer the size ranges from 0.1 to 0.5 micrometer mycoplasma and this mycoplasma is a gram negative bacteria it is it shows pleomorphic so it's a mycoplasma is a pleomorphic it lacks cell wall outside there is a cell membrane this is the cell membrane but it lacks cell wall so it shows pleomorphic nature and it is first observed by no card and coworkers no card and coworkers observed in the year 1898 from pleural fluid because this organism which causes disease in plants as well as animals it causes a cattle there is a disease bovine pleuropneumonia it causes bovine pleuropneumonia in cattle from this pleural fluid no card and coworkers isolated this organism mycoplasma see the structure of this it lacks cell wall and the outer membrane is cell membrane and the dna strand the dna which contains low guanine and low cytosine cytosine and guanine is low in its dna strand and it also possesses ribosome so this is uh, this uh, bovine pleuropneumonia is caused by mycoplasma mycoides mycoplasma mycoides causes bovine pleuropneumonia in cattle it also causes disease in plants also there are certain diseases caused by mycoplasma one more species actinomyces actinomyces these actinomyces are commonly called as ray fungi because of its mycelial structure 
actually the mycel outside it never produces the mycelium due to the structure of its mycelia it's called as ray fungi and it is also gram negative bacteria actinomyces or actinobacteria it contains high guanine and cytosine so compared to this mycoplasma and actinomyces actinomyces dna which possesses high guanine and cytosine but mycoplasma which possesses low guanine and low cytosine then there are so many species which shows symbiotic relationship one of the species is frankia frankia which shows symbiotic association you know very well what is meant by symbiotic association there is a mutual relationship between two different organisms so this frankia is actinomycete frankia which shows a symbiotic relationship with alnus and casuarina alnus and casuarina it makes symbiotic relationship and actinomycete bovis which produces which uh, which is which lives in the jaw and it causes lumpy jaw it causes lumpy jaw actinomyces bovis and in the rainy season due to rain during rainy season there are streptomyces species after a long time when the rain begins the earthy odor appears because of the presence of actinomycet one of the species is streptomyces streptomyces causes earthy odor due to the presence of geosmin 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 one word question due to the presence of this geosmin in the soil the streptomyces species which produces the earthy odor at the time of rain so these are activities of actinomyces actinomyces are commonly called ray fungus it is a gram positive bacteria and it contains high guanine and high cytosine and it shows symbiotic relationship one of the example is frankia it makes symbiotic relationship with alnus and casuarina and actinomyces bovis which causes lump lumpy jaw lumpy jaw which causes streptomyces cause earthy odor earthy odor is caused by streptomyces species so once again let's review what you learned today archibacteria first of all you learn about archibacteria then about cyanobacteria what are the salient features of cyanobacteria and what is mycoplasma and actinomyces draw this diagrams in the class note and learn all these questions thank you